Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement. In this video, I'll be talking about TV modding. But let me first give you some background. Over the past few years, there's been a resurgence of interest in vintage video games. When I say vintage, I mean anything from 1970s games like Pong, a personal favorite, to the early personal computer stuff that ran on Apple IIs and Commodore 64s, all the way up to the early 2000s, for example, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, the original PlayStation, and so on. What distinguishes these game consoles from today's, which I don't mean to disparage, is that the gameplay is more important than the graphics or sound. That wasn't intentional. Early computers and video game hardware was very limited in processing speed, graphics, and sound capabilities. Often, video game designers had to exploit peculiarities of the hardware to obtain better performance. Such is the case with the original Apple II that had a novel way to display color. As people revisit the video games of their childhood or discover vintage video games for the first time, they find that the game often doesn't feel or look right when played on a modern flat screen TV. There can be a perceptible lag between the time you do something and the time you see it on the screen, or the colors and textures may not look as they should. That is, of course, because the way a flat screen TV works is fundamentally different than an old boxy cathode ray tube, I'll call that CRT, TV does. In fact, there are some features, for example, the light gun on a Nintendo NES that just won't work on anything but a CRT TV. That makes CRT TVs, particularly larger, gently used sets with premium tube like a Sony Trinitron, very desirable and thus expensive and scarce. But even with a CRT TV, there can be issues for gaming purists. If you feed the signal from a game console directly into the antenna input, you can still have problems. You may find there are spurious video effects arising from within the TV's tuner, amplifiers, and demodulator. Even though CRT TVs are generally analog devices, there is still plenty of signal processing going on to create a color picture from an analog signal. And in that color signal processing, there can be artifacts that show up as unwanted lines, ghosting, and impure colors. The answer to that has been to mod, as in modify, a CRT TV to accept primary color signals, as in red, green, and blue, collectively known as RGB. Since most gaming consoles only outputted composite video, you may have to modify your gaming console as well. Some CRT TVs are easily modded and some are not worth the effort. Generally speaking, for a CRT TV to be easily modified, it needs to have an OSD, that is on-screen display chip, and a jungle chip, which is a microcontroller that does the job of the video IF, the detector, the demodulator, as well as other functions. If your CRT TV has these, it may be possible to add a minimum of circuitry and a plug and make your TV into an RGB monitor capable of exceptional color and video play as good or better than what you've seen before. Recently, when I was in Stouffville, Canada, I had the privilege to meet Sunther, who has developed a simple and elegant solution to make modding easy on many CRT TVs. He gave me one at no cost with the hope that I would use it. I wanted to, but then I discovered to my dismay that my Sony Trinitron TV is not in the easily modded category Full disclosure, since he gave it to me for free, this is technically a video with paid promotion. However, if I wasn't impressed by it or intending to use it on one of my own TVs, I wouldn't be making this video. So let's take a quick look at Sunther's Mux kit for modding a CRT TV. It includes a nicely made and screened printed circuit board, a SCART connector, an IDC connector with ribbon cable, some diodes and resistors that will need to be soldered in, a couple of screws for the SCART connector, an IDC receptacle which also has to be soldered in. Separate the wires on the ribbon cable and then connect them to 
the appropriate places inside your TV. The IDC connector obviously plugs into the IDC receptacle on the board. Which resistors and diodes you solder in depends on your TV. Then you make a hole in the cabinet of your TV so that the SCART connector can poke through. SCART was a standard that was very popular in Europe, but not so much here in North America. It has the advantage of giving you access to lots and lots of signals inside the TV. Then you pick up an RGB to SCART adapter or cable and you should be good to go. Well, as I said, I'd hoped to do this with a TV, but my TV is not suitable. Nevertheless, it is something I'd like to try in the future. This is a really simple solution. There's not much to it. It looks like the hardest part will be taking apart the TV, determining where these wires go. But if you have the diagram for your TV, you can find the jungle chip and the OSD chip. And then cutting a hole for this. That's it. Anyway, for now, I'm, I'm stuck, I guess, without a suitable monitor. My thanks to Sunther for giving me this. I'm, my apologies for not being able to use it in this video. I'm going to provide all of Sunther's information in the description of this video. If this is really useful to you, please let me know in the comments. One last thing, and that's safety. Don't go inside a TV if you're not experienced with high voltages. The information in this video and Sunther's MUX kit are both use at your own risk. I hope you got something out of spending seven minutes of your life watching this video. Please like and subscribe to be notified when new videos appear from Mr. Brown's Basement. Thanks for watching.